everyone is washing their face wrong. <laughs> what? Am I washing my face wrong? I mean, probably. Okay, what? This is the Pursuit of Wellness podcast, and I'm your host, Mari Llewellyn. Hi guys, welcome back to the Pursuit of Wellness podcast. I am so excited for today's episode. It's a really special one. We're talking to my good friend, Celeste Thomas. She's someone that I admire so freaking much. I can't wait to tell you more about her. Before we hop in, I wanna let you know that the Amazon sale of the year is live. Our greens are 30% off right now. I'll make sure I link it in the show notes. Do not miss this sale because we don't do it often. So Celeste, she's incredible and I feel so honored to get to share her with you guys. She's a registered nurse and holistic skincare expert. She is such a joy and such a positive person. She's also a kick-ass mum. She is a mum to baby Odie. She's a wife. She's amazing style and she's honestly one of the most incredible people I've ever met. She's also been through an acne journey like me but now she has like the glossiest, glowiest skin and she does not gatekeep. She has so many tips when it comes to non-toxic, non-pore clogging ingredients and the best procedures she's done and the ones that just aren't worth it. She's also just just so knowledgeable when it comes to fertility. She had a long fertility journey with getting her baby Odie. So she shares kind of what she did after coming off birth control. Today, we're talking about the negative side effects of Accutane, how to get to the root cause of your skin issues, what actually works for acne and for skin in general, why everyone is washing their face wrong. Listen up, guys. Why we shouldn't be slugging the best treatments, laser, needling, Morpheus, threads, and more, skincare tips for our men, motherhood and fertility, setting boundaries, making female friendships, and so much more. You guys are going to love this episode. And as a reminder, if you do enjoy the show, please subscribe, follow, leave a review. It helps me so, so much. We're doing two episodes a week at the moment, which has been a freaking whirlwind, but so much fun. And I can tell you guys are really loving it. So please don't forget to subscribe. Let's hop into this conversation with Celeste. Today on the show, we have a super special guest, a very close friend of mine and someone who I admire so much. Celeste, (laughs) welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I feel like this is just going to be a conversation that we would record like in your car. I know. Hanging out. I know. Like we always do. We have so many great chats and I've been dying to get you on the show and it's finally happening. And the girls were so excited, by the way. I'm a pal girl, so I am very excited as well. And for everyone listening, Mari is even more incredible in person. She is the kindest, most thoughtful, genuine human. And I just wanted everyone to know that because you are. Thank you, Celeste. You're amazing. And I feel like I don't want to dive too deep, but (laughs) I have only known Celeste for a year maybe. Mm -hmm. And we've gotten so close and have so many similarities. Mm -hmm. And what I love about being friends with you is you are like, a couple years ahead of me and where I want to be. So I can always ask you questions and kind of look up to you in that way. Whereas I feel like for my age, I'm kind of doing things that not a lot of people my age are doing. So it's really nice to have someone who has a child and is doing their career and takes care of themselves. So we've got lots of things to talk about today. You are (laughs) a registered nurse, which I always forget, by the Mm -hmm. way. Holistic skincare expert, mother, wife, style icon in my opinion (laughs) guys look at the dress love you (laughs) obsessed so let's hop right in because we have a lot to discuss yes if you don't mind I'd love to start all the way at the beginning and just hear a little bit about your childhood because I feel like it will give us context about who you are today yes so I am an only child I was born in Hawaii spent most of my childhood years there Um, I have a single mom so that really kind of started my journey and I feel like a lot of the decisions in my early life were because of that upbringing. Definitely really interested in health and wellness. I think in Hawaii, it's just such a natural part of life. So I grew up going to health food stores with green smoothies, just 
feeling good and caring about health and wellness. Then we moved to Oregon when my parents got divorced and my mom is from there. We lived in rural Oregon, so horse girl country, which we've connected on that before. I am personally not a horse girl, but my mom is. And I think being raised by a single parent, at least in my case, um, I was definitely urged to do some sort of career that would afford me to have a lifestyle, take care of myself, and not stress financially Mm. because my mom really struggled financially when I was a kid. So in high school, I was very interested in science and went into nursing school because I thought I wanted to be a nurse. And I am a nurse today, but not in the typical sense. So in nursing school, I was kind of going through all the different practicums and learning about different types of nursing and nothing really connected with me because healthcare is not really about wellness. Mm -hmm. It's about sick care and band-aids. And I just didn't feel really connected to it. So throughout that, those years, I was really struggling with my skin. I genetically have acne prone skin. My mom had acne, never really knew how to treat it. She kind of grew out of it. But I was struggling with acne really, really terribly in nursing school. So I was like, okay, if I can learn more about skin and heal my acne, maybe that's my niche. So I ended up working for a plastic surgeon in his med spa office, treating skincare for seven years. I have tried every medication just short of Accutane, every laser, every medical grade product, and really realized that none of that stuff healed my acne. Mm. And I know we're going to get into your acne journey. Yep. But that was just so upsetting. It was shocking, upsetting. I was like, okay, I have access to everything and nothing works. Like what, what is the solution? And I lived in LA. I moved to LA when I got into my aesthetic nursing, nursing career. So I had some friends that were fermenting food, going to the farmer's market, So that really started my holistic skincare journey and everything that I learned that actually healed my skin and what I share now on social media. It's crazy because I have not known you with acne. Mm -hmm. You've known me with acne. You've seen me at really, really bad stages of acne. Mm -hmm. As you just mentioned, you went through different stages of trying spironolactone, Accutane. I didn't try Accutane. That was one thing. My dermatologist Mm. wanted me to do it as a last ditch resort, but I knew I wanted to be a mother and just the potential infertility and, you know, the liver issues. I was not willing to deal with any of those side effects. Being a nurse, I actually read the information about the side effects. And that was the one thing I didn't. So same. I never took Accutane. What would you say are the craziest side effects of Accutane? I need to look again because like right off the top of my head, but I know that it can really damage your liver. Mm -hmm. I know if you get pregnant, you can severely deform your fetus. I know it can sometimes... um, kind of bring up autoimmune issues, skin issues as far as like really dry, irritated, red skin, skin that ages more prematurely because you have no oils. I mean, there's a laundry list of things that can potentially happen. And as we know from TikTok, Alex Earl four times on Accutane, it's not a solution that people claim that it is. Getting to the root cause of what's happening in your body And really being consistent about your health is what clears your skin. It's wild seeing the popularity of Accutane Mm -hmm. now because influencers are posting about it. And it's tough to watch from our perspective Mm -hmm. because we've kind of been through the actual healing process and you have to be so patient Mm -hmm. and willing to put in the hard work. And I feel like watching these young girls take the Accutane and drink on the Accutane and continuously do it. It's kind of watching like a car crash happen in slow motion. You know what I mean? And the sad thing is, is that there's not access to resources to help people heal their skin. Actually, like the dermatologists out there that your insurance pays for are going to prescribe you like they did with me and probably you topical antibiotics, oral antibiotics, spironolactone, then to Accutane. And you can't blame the young girls because it's, that's all they have access to. Totally. And I feel like now things on social media are changing and we're really seeing a popularity and people wanting to get to the root cause and heal themselves. And 
Like that's why I'm on social media. I want to be that resource I didn't have when I was an 18 to 24 year old girl crying every day and not wanting to leave my house because I would wake up with a new breakout every day. Yeah. And my self-confidence was trash. I was so anxious and I just don't want anyone else to experience that because I know more now and I know what really works and I always want to be able to share that. Such a great point about the confidence. I don't think people realize Mm -hmm. how much of an impact it has on your whole identity. I mean, it's the way that you show up in a room when you're talking to someone. Mm -hmm. It really can have such a big impact on your own self-value. Your content is amazing. The Eat To Glow recipes are my fave. (laughs) What would you say are your key principles when it comes to skin and like what actually works? Yeah, I mean, there's so many things. So it's like, okay, we'll get into it. Some some things that I feel like no matter what is happening with your own personal gut or hormones, like this can be helpful and beneficial for you. Um, The number one thing that I would see when I did private coaching, stress is huge when it comes to skin and people often overlook that. So what I always recommend is having some stress management practices and it might sound silly and woo woo, but just having those first 15 to 30 minutes of your day being phone free, caffeine free and taking a moment, whether it's legitimately petting Arnold for 10 minutes <laughs> and just getting a serotonin boost or it's going on a silent walk or it's stretching, like whatever feels good to you, that moment of decompressing and starting your day on a more mellow note is going to be really helpful for your hormones and your skin. Yeah. As a mom, do you wake up before OD in order to get that time? I wake up at five. In order to like have your own moment? Yeah. Okay. I like that. I want to give tips to any moms listening because I know I have a bunch. Yes. I mean, all you mamas out there, first of all, you're doing it. No matter what you're doing, you're incredible because it is truly the hardest job and the hardest job to balance, you know, having your own time to take care of yourself. But I will say, myself included, we spend way too much time on our phones. So if you had half of that time back, you could probably do all the wellness things (laughs) that you wanted. Um, Okay. So stress one. Two is diet. And as Mari and I both experienced recently with cheese breakouts. <laughs> Not the cheese. Not me ordering pizza Why at my house. This? I think it's the I Gemini. got it for the boys. <laughs> what is wrong with us? Like every weekend I'm like, I could probably eat cheese now. No, still can't. Like what? No, bitch, you can't. <laughs> because I have so many guests on the show who talk about the benefits of raw dairy. And I'm yeah. like- let me dabble, but every time I break out. And we're all so bio-individual. So Mari and I are sensitive girlies. <laughs> Super sensitive in every meaning of the word. <laughs> we can't do anything fun. No, right. we can't, but there are consequences, <laughs> yes. including cheese. So- I love when we both show up at Pilates with breakouts and we're like, I ate cheese. <laughs> Damn you. It's just so good. Oh my God, it's I so know. good. I know. I will say cheese hack, Parmesan cheese aged good parmesan cheese most of the lactose which is you know potential to break you out is metabolized by bacteria so you can get away with parm i can get away with parmesan cheese yep i had it actually last weekend and i think my breakouts are just from microneedling right now so i think you're right so cheese hack cheese hack but diet is so so huge literally your skin is a reflection of what's happening inside your body and the amount of inflammatory foods that we're eating, unbeknownst to us, for the most part, we're crazy with labels after however many years of, you know, like stress and struggle. But the average pal girly may not realize how much sugar is in her food, how much inflammatory oils are in her food, what the dairy, the gums, the additives, preservatives. I mean, I cook like 95% of my food. That's how I keep my skin clear. And I know what's in it. And if I'm traveling or eating out a lot, my skin not only will be more broken out, pores will be clogged, but it just will look dull and not glowy. I love the story you told me recently about how your family was making um, or ordering in chicken wings to do the hot sauce test. And Celeste goes, yeah, I walked a mile and a half to get my own chicken wings from the grocery store and bake them. (laughs) Love that. It's the commitment. It's the commitment. But I feel like we're almost lucky because we have to. Yeah. Because we literally break out if we don't. Yeah. Some people don't have the same skin problems and they just are able to get away with eating the processed food, but it will hit them 
potentially later on. Oh, 100% it'll hit them. Yeah. And that's the shitty thing about our food system and being from the UK originally. Like there's stuff in the UK that we would, or that would never accept American food. Like just the amount of crappy ingredients. So if you want to improve your skin, make your food at home as much as possible. If you have a favorite almond milk brand, look at the label. Does it have a ton of added sugar? Does it have inflammatory oils? Like just try to find your staples that you know are good quality from like Thrive Market is a great example of a low cost place that has really high quality stuff. So the more you can simplify your diet, cook at home, incredible. And then I'll give one more, maybe just two no, more go really off, good please. ones. Everyone is washing their face wrong. <laughs> what? Am I washing my face wrong? I mean, probably. Okay, what? It, this is one of my biggest, biggest things I like to talk about because think about the end of the day. We are, we're done. We're exhausted. We're literally, I don't want to mess up my mic, but we're doing a, a five second like cleanser to get our makeup off. If you took a white cotton round and put it on your skin, what would that look like after you wash your face? Yep. No, you're right. And I've actually tested this out and that's why I do multiple washes now, Mm -hmm. cleanses, because I was not doing it the right way. And no one is. I mean, we're just not thinking about it. So pal girls, I challenge you, put a timer on your phone for one minute and then cleanse your face, like facial massage, get in there, make sure you're hitting your upper lip, the bridge of your nose, all the way up to your hairline, your neck, like chin, acne. I mean, are we even washing the sebum, dirt, oil, indoor pollutants, outdoor pollutants, makeup? Like how is your skin supposed to breathe and absorb any of your products mm-hmm. if it's not clean? Okay, question. Mm-hmm. I want to tell you how I do it and see yes. what you think. Okay. For example, today I have makeup on. Mm -hmm. The way I would go about it Mm -hmm. is I would do micellar water. I think Mm -hmm. it's called bio something. Yes, On a pad, whole face. Yes. Then I use an oil cleanser Mm -hmm. and I go in, in, in. And I think it's it's from the acne clinic I work with in New York. Okay. Go, go, go. And then I have um, baby towels that I use. Yes, me too. Okay, cool. Wet that, get it off. Then I do my clear stem the calming cleanser, mm-hmm. then I do that. Mari is the most extra and I love it. I ha- well, I have to because otherwise, you know me, like yeah. I will break out. Yeah, yeah. Then red light. Yes. Then products. Which I love. Is that correct? I think that's great. Okay. You might even be doing one more step than you need to. I know. I'm a bit extra with And that. that's okay. Like okay. you are an extremist in the best of ways. <laughs> you are. You do all the things right. Like Mari's the best pupil. Emily is like, Mari, you're my best student ever. You I'm do everything. I am traumatized. It's a trauma response. I'm not being disciplined. I'm just traumatized. <laughs> we're working through a lot of things. You're not alone if you're listening and you're still struggling with your childhood trauma because we're right there with you. Yeah. Um, but no, it's great. Okay. I think that's awesome. I think that the Meissler water and the oil cleansing are kind of one in the same. So you could so like, probably skip out on one of them. I feel like I should skip on the micellar. Yeah, I don't think you need it. Okay. The oil cleanse will be able to get your makeup off. Cool. Yeah. I just use one cleanser, just one gel-based gentle cleanser for my makeup. What and if I use? need to Everyone's do it- going to want to know. I love to. I love the honest, simple gel cleanser. It's like 15 bucks. Okay. Really good. And then the clear stem cleanser is also incredible. A little bit more expensive, but it's very nice. Okay. You love clear stem. It's great. That was my other question. Mm -hmm. With all of these recommendations, with diet, stress, um, et cetera, how important is the actual skincare we're using? I think it's probably... It's it's so hard because everyone's different. It's like if your diet is a hundred, then it's fifty percent. But mm. it depends where you are in your journey and what you're what you're doing. I always like to say it's probably twenty five to thirty percent, which is crazy because people mm-hmm. think it's the thing that will fix their skin. Yeah, and it's not. It's like the added bonus. It's whoever you're talking to. If you're talking to an esthetician, they're going to say skincare is ninety five percent. If you talk to a nutritionist, they're going to say diet is 95%. Mm. If you talk to a dermatologist, they're going to say, you know, it's genetics and medication is going to be the 95% and just put Aquaphor on your face. So everyone, when you're listening to people online, just know your intuition and what you think is happening in your body is 
is really what's happening. Yeah. And sure, we have a lot of education to do if you're dealing with your skin and you're struggling, but you can't listen to everyone or everything you hear, especially if there's some sort of motive that involves you paying someone. Yeah, like the whole slugging trend. I'm going to pass on that one. Hard pass if you're acting prone. Hard pass. Yeah. Like, love it for you guys. Not for me. No. Hell no. no. A crazy occlusive barrier that's literally meant to clog your pores. They're if, using Vaseline, right? Yeah. If you have dry 55-year-old skin, 60-year-old skin, they've never had a breakout, go go off, slug yourself, enjoy. Like I'm not going to put the byproduct of oil manufacturing on my face personally, but there's lots of things you could slug with. I love that. that are slug yourself sounds really inappropriate. Yeah, it is. Like what? Where did this word come from? <laughs> sounds sexual. I know there's a movement <laughs> happening right now and Emily's posting about it. By the way, for anyone who doesn't know, Emily is mine and Celeste's integrative health practitioner. Yes. I always try to say the full title because I keep calling her my doctor and I shouldn't say that. Yeah. So there's a big movement right now with non-pore clogging ingredients mm -hmm. versus a product that claims it's clean. Yes. How do we know if a product is actually non-pore clogging versus it's just marketing itself as clean? This is something I've been getting into recently too. Like this is very eye-opening for me and her research and working with as many clients as she ha has has really opened my eyes to the potential for acne based on clogging your pores with certain ingredients. They're completely different things. I mean, the hard thing is, is that there's no real certification for clean skincare like there is for organic. We don't know. It's a greenwashing marketing term. It's really about knowing the ingredients and what their potential high usage result is. Mm -hmm. So is it endocrine disrupting? Is it causing cancer? Is it irritating your skin? And it is very, very challenging to distinguish product from product. Plus, what no one really knows is say we figure out, okay, phthalates are bad. Companies will then reformulate a chemical component and rename pretty much the same thing, a different jargony term, once consumers have found out what phthalates are. Mm. They'll come up with a new jargony name. So like, it's really impossible for you to know what's clean. Find your trusted sources, me, Emily, Environmental Working Group, Think Dirty, brands like Credo, and that's your first line of defense. Yeah. And the second line of defense, if you're an acne prone girly, is to find either an influencer you trust to shop their recommendations, me, Emily, Mari, and what she uses, um, brands that you trust, maybe it's Clear Stem, maybe it's Coco Kind, like those brands that don't use pork logging ingredients, even though Coco Kind does have some. So it really, is, it takes a little bit of research or you can just find your people and know that they're doing the research for you. One of my favorite recommendations you gave me was RMS. Yeah. I'm obsessed with RMS. I use their foundation. I have it on today. Same. Oh, I love it. So good. And the glow sunscreen. I know. So, so good. good because I use it as a bronzer. Yeah. When I have a spray tan, I need to kind of match my face. I put the sunscreen underneath and it's also, you can wear it by itself and it looks so nice. Yes. What you inspired me to get the darker color. Yeah. It's so good. It's so good. So good. I get a lot of questions, guys. RMS is amazing. It is incredible. And their lip liner, my favorite lip liner of all time. Oh. It's so good. You don't say. Yeah, I'm having it on right now. Dang. Love. And then also Merit. I know not mm -hmm. all of their stuff is non-pore clogging, but I have the blush and I'm pretty sure it's non-pore clogging. Mm -hmm. I haven't tried any of their stuff, but I need to. You would love the blush. Yes. I have the dark one and it actually is really, really nice. Okay, I need to try. But yeah, guys, go need to follow. raid your makeup bag, actually. We haven't done that. Yeah. We, we need should. to go on a girl's trip and then we can see what each other are working with. I know. Because I would use anything you use. Yeah, we same. have similar coloring, so I feel like it would work out. Yeah. Um, but I have gone through every I mean on my acne journey I went through every single product I use and put it in a website and it, yep. it's really tedious Ugh. Fee had to help me because I was having a hard time and we checked everything mm -hmm. and I remember crying because I had to throw some of my favorite products out but you just end up forgetting about it oh yeah and there's such great things out there now that you can use so guys follow Celeste follow Emily because they always are posting about great non-pore clogging options thanks and I have 
my recent skincare routine with all the products that are completely non-pore clogging that I just posted for like winter so Ooh. people can kind of see what I'm using because I'm all about the the layering and I'm also I really love affordable brands. I have a kid. I live in LA. I'm not spending $100 on a product because really it's like for me, I've found through trying so many different brands, I get sent everything, which I feel so blessed. But some of the $80 things are pore clogging and don't work great. So like I want to test them all and share the good good. Yeah. You know, what actually is worth your money. And I really, once I find something affordable that I love, I'm like, I'm sticking with it. I love that. And I like the fact that we have those affordable options. I mean, like La Mer, isn't that the most expensive one? Isn't that insanely pore clogging? Completely. I did a dupe yesterday. I do these non-toxic dupes and I did the La Mer dupe. It's an SPF 50. It's $115 oh and God. it has so... I, I think I found like seven different pore cloggers, irritants, hormone disruptors, and potential carcinogens. That's crazy. Yeah. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. What about Dr. Barbara Sturm? I've been, I've tried to use her as dupes because sometimes when there's very viral brands, I'm like, ooh, I'm going to dig. I'm going to find something. <laughs> You're like, like a little investigator. I got it. <laughs> what I do my time. time. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. And her stuff's pretty clean. Is it? And I didn't find any pore cloggers in her SPF and the majority of her stuff is pretty clean. I have heard from estheticians that I trust that it is so ridiculously overpriced for the ingredient quality that I don't recommend it. But if I was offered a facial at her studio, I'd be like, all right, okay, we'll Barbara, give it a go. I'm on my way. Barbara, okay. She's killing it though, right? Yeah, That's yeah. a huge brand. Huge brand. Good for her. Yeah. I know you're also really open about procedures you've had yes. done. So you've spoken about Morpheus, injectables, mm -hmm. threading. I want to talk to you about what you think is actually worth it and what isn't. Yeah. And I also love you're very careful with who you go to and mm -hmm. you're very into the subtle look of everything. So I really trust your opinion. Thank you. So tell us what you've done that you think was amazing and what you've done that you're like, don't even bother. Yes. So my background, I actually was an injector and did laser facials for seven years. So I really know what's on the market. I have lots of experience trying everything in my clinical practice. And I mean, I want to stay looking good. I'm almost, I'll be 35 this year. So I'm like trying to maximize my own collagen and feel incredible because I don't want to wake up at 45 and feel the need to do a facelift and you know, all the things. So I'm trying to just do all of the non-invasives. High maintenance to be low maintenance. Exactly. Mm. Yes. That's the new thing I've heard. Yes. Yes. That's, I feel like that's going to be your your Texas hot wife vibe. So. You are. You already are that. But like all the things <laughs> I love. And I'm going to Sherpa you through all of these. I'm not doing anything treatments. before I talk to Celeste, honestly. <laughs> I love it. Okay. So a um, few things. I feel like the trend of big lips and lip filler is really aging young girls. Mm. So I do not recommend that. I think lip filler is great. It's fine. It's a hyaluronic acid. I mean, everyone who questions my connection to non-toxic and then also wanting to do injectables, are they the cleanest thing in the whole world? No. But when we think about our toxic load as a whole, I'm not cooking out of plastic. I'm not using a microwave. I have air purifiers. I'm eating all organic. I'm doing so many things that lower my toxic load. Botox and filler to me is not going to move the needle for my entire health, you know, toxic load, load quota. Preach. Plus, I'm still drinking alcohol, which crosses a blood-brain barrier just like Botox. And we don't know what the long-term complications of Botox is, but we know the long-term complications of drinking alcohol. It's not positive. So take everything with the grain of salt and just if you want to do something like Botox or filler, don't let anyone make you feel bad about it. I get the same You're comment good. all the time. I, I love your answer there it's a full circle approach it's like look at everything you're doing on a daily basis and if you want to do a little something it's like you pick and choose it's better 100%. to have the knowledge and then decide and you might be moving to the woods soon but <laughs> i am not about to move to the woods like have my own well you know make my own woolen clothes because like, of what dyes what do you think i'm doing in texas like i'm not making i'm not knitting <laughs> i'm not making wool 
I mean, it's great that you're moving out to Texas because you're not going to have the pollutants that we have every day. That's pretty much what I mean. But you're going to be out there. You might have chickens. You might be farm girl. Come over. I'll make you a sweater. I mean, <laughs> I'm here for it. I think I'm allergic to wool. But Come use my well. <laughs> You think that's funny. You're going to move to Texas and people are going to ask you if you're on a well because in rural Oregon, we talk about our wells a lot. Are you serious? Yeah. Everyone flexes their well. Like my well's bigger than yours. Exactly. My well's deeper than yours. Stop. (laughs) Again, sexual. I'm ready to go to Texas and just go full granola mode. You know, just like tip over the edge. (laughs) I'm so excited to see where we are in a year with Mari and her fashion. (laughs) What, What she's chatting about to the neighbors. If you see me disappear off social, just know. You're living your farm dream. I'm digging a hole. <laughs> I'm rolling around. She's going to be a homesteader. She's the new ballerina farm. Oh my God. Well, not with that many kids. That's crazy. <laughs> Did you see her giving birth in a bathtub with all her kids around the bathtub? I mean, I would punch a child. Sorry. I th- By that point, I think they just fall out. I think, think? I think by that point, no, it can't be. It's still got to be awful, but I give her... I give her all the props for her. I'm the biggest fan of Mrs. Ballerina Farm. Me too. Everyone who wants to question her, she's the mother of eight, okay? That alone, she deserves a medal. I don't care if she had $300 million. That's the thing. What do you want her to do? She's, yeah. She's doing, she's she's living her best life. She's making pumpkin bagels from scratch with eight kids. With pure pumpkin, (laughs) like butter from her cow. She's milking the cow every day. I posted it in my story, guys. And I was like, dream life. And Celeste was like, not my dream life. And Celeste posted a woman walking down Rodeo Drive. It was Morgan Stewart. (laughs) Was it really? And Celeste was like, this is my dream life. So, you know, to each their own. I grew up doing farm chores and I'm done. I get that. So I think everyone has their farm moment. I already totally. had mine. I'm ready for my farm moment. Did I tell you there's a miniature horse farm down the road from my house in Stop. Austin? Yeah. That's a problem. I can't wait to bring Odie for bring the Bring Odie and we'll pop her on one. And if she fits, I'll just get it. Because <laughs> then I have a reason <laughs> and to have a And got you a pony. <laughs> okay, anyway, sorry. Back to procedures. Oh, yeah, we yeah, went yeah. on just a massive tangent. <laughs> yes. Okay, procedures. What I recommend. Okay. So I'm going to talk about probably the the pow demo of women that are probably what would you say gen older gen z to our age like i'd say 25 to 35 millennials okay Uh, women of our own of our own kind nice to you hey (laughs) okay so i am a big fan of what mari just did and what i just did my micro needling with prp that is going to be one of the hottest treatments for the next five to 10 years, utilizing your own healing and growth factors to stimulate collagen, incredible. You can take it a step further, which okay. I always do. Oh God. So you can actually get your PRP drawn from your arm, you know, the blood spun PRP, platelet rich factors or platelet rich plasma. Then they turned it into PRFM, which makes it thicker. So then they inject the PRFM into your under eyes. Oh my God. I did this five years ago. I used to get under eye filler. I have not had anything injected in my under eyes in five years. They look better than they did when I got filler. Wow. It just plumps them if you have any hollowing. And all my mamas out there, no. Your baby leeches such a high percentage of your physical collagen that it takes two years to even remotely replenish it. So if you look hollow, sunken, tired, this would be an incredible, completely non-toxic procedure that would just make you chef's kiss feel amazing. Okay. I love that. I had under eye filler once and it was a huge mistake. Mm -hmm. I think it's something about my face. I got it done and my eyes were half the size. Like it looked like when I smiled, my eyes disappeared. Yeah. And it just was not a good look on me. So I would never do under eye filler again, but I would definitely consider that. No one should ever do under eye filler again. Just do this. Also, isn't it kind of dangerous? Um, Any kind of filler could be dangerous. You can occlude a vessel if they inject the filler into the wrong spot. So sure. I don't think under eye filler is as dangerous as nose filler. That's where you can really blind yourself. Why? It's just the vasculature around your nose. It can be really dangerous to inject filler. Only cannula. What do you think of the fact that filler, or do you think it's factual that filler drifts? Yes, it is factual. 
Oh. It can drift and it's not abnormal, but it's easy to get dissolved. So if you feel like your filler has drifted, you can just go into your injector and get it dissolved. And any good injector will take a look at you. And if there's migrating filler, they'll tell you to dissolve it, whether it's lips or eyes, anything. Okay. So PRFM, totally. Then I have done Morpheus 8. I do really like it. I will say I kind of am weary about it with women in our age bracket because it melts fat mm. and it's all based on your practitioner. So the different, they can select the levels of how deep the frequency goes. And if you have a really good practitioner, they can give you a really great treatment. If you have a bad practitioner, they can give you a bad treatment. That is the same when it comes to filler, Botox, anything. But I think doing, spend your money on the microneedling with PRP, PRFM if you have under eye issues. And a lot of people hate threads. I love threads. Give us the tea on threads. First of all, you have to find a, the best person ever. You told me to find a plastic facial a surgeon. A facial plastic surgeon. Okay. This is no joke, Mari. They go into deep tissue planes. Like they're cutting with a scalpel shoving a huge bore cannula into your deepest tissues of your face with a barbed hook <laughs> wire this is and then suturing it. It's medieval. And it feels like someone is just railroading your face. This it's not hurt? painful. Really? Well, my doctor, the facial plastic surgeon who I used to work for, completely numbed me to the point where I looked like Quasimodo. Like think dental block gone wrong. Like think... <laughs> But you think what? I have to it? show you the video. It, that only lasts for like four hours. Okay. And how long have you had threads? I've had, this is my third time getting threads and they last for like two years. So six years I've been doing threads. I've seen a before and after of your face and I'm not mm -hmm. sure if it was from Morpheus or from threads, but I feel it was like- the Morpheus probably. It was such a crazy difference. Yeah. Like I want to show it yeah. to the Pow Girls because it really is quite- yeah. It made me want to do whatever you were doing. Totally. Truly. And the before and afters are really good. I just worry about it melting that baby fat in your face that you do want to keep. Right. That's my one. And the point of threads mm -hmm. is to kind of tighten, right? And lift, snatch. Lift tissue. So in the mid face, like for me, I always sleep on my right side. And please, everyone sleep on your back. Oh, it's like... One of the things I wish I would have known when I was a teenager and in my 20s is one side of my face is just so much lower. I can't sleep on my back. I always I am know. like, you know. There's a pillow I'll send you. Oh. There's a pillow to help you. You're kidding. Mm -mm. Okay. It'll, it'll work. For me, it's my left side. Mm -hmm. And that's our side that looks sunken and the eyebrows lower and everything. So I started getting threads just on one side to lift it. And the thing that I didn't realize is that it also builds collagen from the trauma of the thread. Oh. So my cheekbones look better, look higher, look more lifted, even after the threads are dissolved. I used to get filler in my cheeks and now I don't have to because the threads built collagen. Yeah, you have the best cheekbones ever. Yeah. I really want to do threads at some point. You told me to wait a little bit. I would just wait till you're noticing a little bit of laxity. Okay. And whenever you want. Like I'm the kind of person, if I want to do something, I'm not going to listen to anyone's opinion about when I should do it. I'd be like, mama's going same, to get threads. I'm the same way. Yeah. My new hyperfixation is lip blushing that I want to get. I can't wait for you to get it because once you get it, then I'll probably get it. Yeah. I think we like have the right, we're fair. So mm -hmm. I feel like it would be really good, but I want to yeah. go to the right person. And that's another thing, like having lip blushing to define your lip shade and lip lines versus like overfilling would be such a natural, beautiful thing for younger women to do. Mm. Because like, look at Kylie. Look at Kylie five years ago. How old is she? No one, I mean, we know, but is she 37 or is she 27? I know. Because she just looks fake. Yeah. And that's like, my husband keeps it really real with me. And I appreciate him for that. He's like, mm, uh, no more Botox. Or mm, because it takes away from the beauty of your appearance if you start to look fake. 100%. And I There's think no point. the lip filler is getting popular. I mean, the boob jobs are skyrocketing because yeah. of the Alex Earls, mm -hmm. the lip filler. And also love her, by the way. Like I think yes. she's, I think she was very positive about her boob job. I don't think her influence is so much bigger 
than she probably can even comprehend. Exactly. So just the fact that she even got a boob job is having an impact on younger women. Mm -hmm. And the lip filler, everyone's super open about it right now, which is also good. Yeah. But I think the girls are getting younger and younger and younger. Yeah, it's just, I don't know. I think a natural, beautiful face has such more of an impact than a big lip and a big boob. Yep. You know, <laughs> highlight your own, highlight your strengths. Like you do you. And Alex Earl is doing her, but I don't want any young person to feel pressure to get big fake lips and big fake boobs because they, they're seeing a lot of it. Okay, last question on procedures. Yeah. What do you think of sculpture? Love it. Oh, love. I was so, talking about it at my appointment. I have sculpture. What? Love sculpture. A little bit in my jawline. Mm. I've have I had it anywhere else? I mean, one of my very close friends and old colleagues does my injectables, Ali B Beauty. If anyone needs an injector in LA, she's so incredible. She's like an artist and she doesn't really tell me. She's just like sizing up my face and then she's like okay here 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 and you it's like nothing happened but everything happened i want that you have to go to her she's real harsh though she'll be like we're dissolving your lips today they look fake <laughs> and we're like <laughs> okay <laughs> you always leave looking better but we love her honesty um but sculpture is really cool so it was developed for aids patients to build structure back to their faces when they had lost a lot of bone density tissue structure so it's a calcium bond it's a free calcium bond so what happens is you inject the sculpture and it's very thin and then your body builds collagen or builds calcium to those bonds so your body naturally comes in with calcium and then you have it in your in your face for a longer amount of time than filler so it lasts longer it can look a lot more natural and it builds structure chin jawline cheekbones and it it's really, really chef's kiss. And it, mm. it is even more non-toxic and natural than any other kind of filler. That's what I like about the mm. sound of it. Okay, yes. cool. I'm yeah. going to look into that. Yes. Let's hop into a different topic. Let's do it. I want to hear about motherhood, fertility. Mm. You have a baby girl. I do. How old is Odie now? She is a year and nine months. She's a beautiful baby. Thank you. We love Odette. She's the best. Did you always know? that you wanted to be a mom? I think being an only child, I didn't have a lot of exposure to little kids and all my cousins are older besides one cousin on my mom's side. So I was just, you know, a selfish little only child Gemini just twirling around thinking the world revolved around me. <laughs> and that's, you know, <laughs> I don't know if you can relate <laughs> to any to of this that. day, still doing it. Working against it every day. <laughs> yeah. Trying not Still to Still into Lululand. <laughs> Legit me. My whole life. <laughs> the world is burning and I'm like, ha, da, 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 da. <laughs> oh. um, but then when I graduated from nursing school, it was a horrible nursing market and I couldn't get a job for a few months. And I was like, hearing about all these nanny gigs, I was like, oh, I could do that. I'm a nurse. People are going to want to hire me because I know things. True. Someone hired me. Don't know why. Because I had no experience with kids, but they're like, she'll be fine. So I nannied this little boy. His name was Gus. Oh. And I started nannying him at four months old. And he was my son. Oh, I didn't know this. Mm -hmm. He was my boy. Like, I was that awful nanny who pretended to be his mom out in public. <laughs> <laughs> this is mine. He was a blonde-haired, blue-eyed, beautiful little boy. We looked identical. And he was my son. Stop. So you kind of had a boy mom moment. <laughs> totally. Totally. And I fell in love with it. So it, I worked two 10 hour days a week and I was like, damn, this is really, really hard. Like really a challenge. But I knew through that experience that I wanted to be a mom someday. Yeah. So I was just like, of course. And I really think that if I didn't have children, when I got to my 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, I mean, my grandma, who I'm so close to, who passed a few years ago, was 102 when she died. Wow. And seeing our family revere love, respect, I mean, she was everything to us. And we were we were all she had. I mean, you're 102, well, everyone you know is dead, obviously. <laughs> obviously, she would always say. But just seeing that legacy was so cool. And I'm like, I want my life to look like this. So I knew I wanted to be a mama. Tell us about 
your fertility journey? Was it easy to get pregnant? Did you struggle? We're talking a lot about fertility on power right now because mm-hmm. the girls know I'm in my baby making era. Yeah. I've been a little bit too candid about it, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like telling them what Greg's doing with his balls and everything. They loved it. So I'm going to keep going. <laughs> but how was it for you? Oh, man. It was rough, Mari. It was really rough. And even when you were open with me about like wanting to start to try, I was like, try to realize it could take time and don't be upset. I mean, of course, you're allowed to have your feels, but just know that it it can take time and that's okay. And that all of these things have to come together in order for a baby to be born. So it's like, it's heavy and it's big. And as women, I think we put so much pressure on ourselves and we've talked about this, that if something isn't working and you're trying in month one, two, three, four, and you're not pregnant, it's you feel like the weight of the world is on your shoulders and that you've done something wrong. You gave me really good advice. And I think when I got into it, I didn't anticipate how much it consumes your mind. Mm-hmm. I have legit been trying for one month yeah. and I'm already upset that I'm not pregnant. And that, that doesn't make sense. And I know that. And I know that it has to be so perfect to come to fruition. But still, I, I guess I notice now all the pregnant women around me, everyone mm-hmm. having babies. I, would lit, I was at dinner last night and I see out of the corner of my eye a girl telling her friends that she's pregnant. Oh. And I was like, wow. And I was so happy for her. Yeah, But it's like, it is crazy how emotional it is truly. So how long did it take for you and Nate? So when Nate and I got married, I was 29. We had been together since I was 26. So we had had some time together and my husband's six years older. Plus Nate is, he's the best. He's a baby whisperer. He's big dad vibes. He's dad vibes. Even when he was single, he would be the weirdo at a barbecue trying to hold someone's baby. He was. Yes, he's always loved babies. So he was ready yesterday. He was down to be a dad the minute we got married. And so I stopped taking my birth control. Uh, I had been on birth control since I was 17. So that was 12 years of birth control. I think everyone listening can relate, me as well. It's crazy how long we're on this medication. Without being educated about the potential issues with coming off of birth control, having a cycle that may have never been completely regulated because so many women, myself included, start taking acne as teen or taking birth control as teens for acne, which is why I started taking it at 17. Mm -hmm. So I got off birth control. It took over two years for me to get a normal cycle Wow! again. And I was devastated. I mean, everything worked out in the right timing, but for someone who is a newlywed and their husband wants to be a dad, I mean, he was so supportive, but I was a mess. It was so emotional for me. And I was so fearful that I would be the reason we couldn't have children. I think that pressure is so real for so so many women. And if anyone is going through that right now, and I know so many of the people listening are going through that, just know that my heart goes out to you and I, oh, I just feel for you and I'm sending you so much love because it feels like you're the biggest failure. Yeah. And it's so unfair that we put that pressure on ourselves, but it's so real. And I think it's nice to hear from you at this stage in your life when you do have a baby girl Mm -hmm. and you're living it out, like it will happen. You know, I think the patience part is key. Do you have advice for people who want to get their cycle back? Like, what did you do? Stop taking birth control, first of all, Mm -hmm. which we know. Um, For me, I, it's so interesting because now my advice would be different than what I did because now that we are working with Emily, Um, because I'm still having issues with my period and it's just now regulating birth control for so many years, then getting off of it, having amenorrhea for two years, which is lack of period, going to an OBGYN and they put me on a stimulating medication. Now I forget exactly what it was, but it was supposed to help regulate my hormones. Mm. Didn't do anything, wasn't helpful, no regular period. I started 
going to a traditional Chinese medicine doctor and acupuncturist, herbs, weekly acupuncture, and that worked. Okay. I, I got a my lot cycle of people pack. say that. Mm-hmm. And then started tracking with natural cycles, which I know you use. I do. I think we're going to, I'm going to work with them because I'm just so obsessed with the app. It's incredible. It's incredible. If you're trying to prevent pregnancy or if you're trying to get pregnant, I knew nothing about my cycle until I had that app, truly. And that's the thing. Now being a mom, I'm going to teach Odie as soon as she starts her period exactly what fertile days, non-fertile days, knowing her basal body temp through an app, being able to track her cycle because we can only get pregnant for three, maybe five days out of a 28-day cycle. That's insane. Why are we taking birth control? Also, we need to be wrapping it up. Like I hate to say it, but like the amount of women... I know who have gotten herpes in their 30s is not okay. Wow. And everyone has HPV and we're all like putting ourselves at risk. So we got to wrap it up. Wrap it up. Wrap it up. Get tested or wrap it up and then know our days because birth control is ruining so many lives. Like my own included. But also me included. Like I lost my period for over a year. And at first my reaction was, this is great. I don't have to deal with it. Right. And then a few months in, I was like, hold on, I'm 29 and I want to have a child. What does this mean? And I went to an acupuncturist as well. I did a few things that I think contributed. I also started taking supplements. I was on, and this was before I met Emily. I was on DIM, Vitex, Mm -hmm. which some of those can work. They're a little bit surface level in my opinion. They're not really root cause. Now that I work with Emily so closely, I feel like my cycle has gotten more and more regular. My hormones are perfect. I'm on progesterone, which I told you about. That's my biggest thing. I'm not a registered nurse or qualified to say this, but apparently progesterone is a really important hormone when it comes to keeping your baby if Mm -hmm. you get pregnant. Um, So I'm really happy I'm taking that. And I knew I was super low because I don't think I would have been able to maintain a pregnancy, you know? Of course. And when I got my period back, we got pregnant the first month of trying. You did? And I miscarried the baby six weeks after. So it was pretty much just past the chemical pregnancy, which is where they say like there's no heartbeat yet. So very early miscarriage, which I was actually in my analytical nurse brain, like, oh my God, I can get pregnant. So the anxiety of the past two years was lifted, but... I probably had such an imbalance still happening in my body. Who knows why that happened? But like you're saying, knowing your hormone levels, knowing where your progesterone is before you get pregnant, that is something I would recommend to any woman who's interested in getting pregnant in the next year, two years. Yeah. Because going through the heartache of losing a pregnancy when you've wanted it for so long is worse than waiting to be pregnant. Yeah. It's really challenging and so many women go through it, but I'm learning more and more about, you know, my gut health, how leaky gut that I have impacts my hormones. We think about this, Mari, it's like, we just want to get pregnant, right? Where are we baseline before we get pregnant? If we're not at our healthiest, pregnancy knocks you on your ass. Postpartum knocks you deeper into a hole in the ground. If you're not at a good place physically, or emotionally, it is going to be very, very challenging for you to have a positive experience. Love that you're saying that because I feel like I get a lot of questions. What are you doing for fertility? And my number one answer is I'm just taking care of myself and balancing my body out and trying to recover from the hormone imbalance that I was having. That's the best thing you could do. 100%. Truly. And I was talking to Celeste about this prior. I'm not sure if you guys have seen JC Marie Smith's story. She has a podcast called What We Said and her and her husband had been trying to have a baby for four plus years and she went through IVF and her first embryo transfer failed and they were devastated and I was watching along the journey because I'm very interested in this and the level of detail that they were monitoring her progesterone, Mm -hmm. FSH levels, there's so much that goes into it. And if you can try to educate yourself on your end, it, I think it would be so helpful if for anyone listening who's trying to have a baby. 100%. How do you balance it all? Because you have a baby, a career, 
husband, you also are in shape and taking care of yourself. Like, how do you do it all? Well, I don't think any mom will say they feel balanced, but I will say really sitting down with yourself and getting clear on what you want your life to look like and what you want, what is the most important thing to you in your life is such a huge part because you have to get rid of a lot of excess excess things. You have to cut way back because you don't have time to do half of the things you used to do. So for me, oh, and this is where things might get emotional. Um, growing up in a home that wasn't necessarily calm, peaceful, happy very often. I have plenty of great memories and I give my mom so much credit for being a single parent and raising me. But I think my greatest goal in life is to have a happy family life, to have a happy, beautiful home with laughter and love and a sense of security for my children, having parents that love each other and that are there for them. And so that's my goal. So everything I do needs to help facilitate that. Because if I'm trying to go to every event and be everywhere and work with every brand and give myself to 85 friends who don't really give a shit, that's all taking away from my goal. So you have to be really cutthroat and you have... And it's not, it's not a bad thing. It's just like cutthroat with your boundaries and really, really intentional about what you're doing. You know? <laughs> I'm, so, I'm like going to cry. <laughs> we talk about this a lot because Celeste and I have similar upbringings and experiences. And I feel like I have a similar goal. And it's a huge part of when I envision having a child it's something I envision too and watching you do it with Odie is so special every time I've been to your house or I just see you with her in the environment you've created I think it's so admirable and I can tell just through your actions and the way you live life like she is your priority and I think that's so freaking cool and you manage to do things for yourself as well but I can tell the boundaries that you set are so intentional and that's the thing that you've told me is such a great part about having a kid is like you become so clear on what actually matters and it kind of trims the fat of your life you exactly. know so that and then I will say single parents out there people without support people who don't have help I give them so much credit and I can't even imagine what that's like honestly because my husband is an equal partner he is a 50-50 partner. And I know that it's not always the case. And, you know, anything with motherhood is so touchy. So I'm just sharing my experience. And if anyone feels, you know, triggered or upset by that, just know I'm only sending you love because if you're struggling right now, it's because you need help and support. And I hope that people provide that for you or that you can get that because you deserve that. But as women, we cannot do it all. We cannot be everything and everywhere. And if we try to do that, we are going to be in the depths of anxiety and depression, fatigue, burnout, all the things because social media makes it seem like you can have a company that's thriving and have three kids and look hot doing it and be doing all of your you know meditation practices and still having time for friends and family. That's, that's not realistic unless you have support. You are really good about sharing that because from an exterior it does look like you have it all together and you're doing it all at once but I know last week you were really struggling with Odie and, and the daycare process yes. and that was really hard for you yes um and then traveling with her like oh. I know it kind of is just a give and take every day like mm -hmm. where can I put my energy and I think you're killing it thank you so much thank you I'd love to do a little fan Q&A yeah the girls have questions let's so let's it. kind of rapid fire okay your favorite non-pore clogging makeup brands? RMS. Mm -hmm. I love Tower 28. And all of these brands as an umbrella, it's like there might be pore clogging ingredients in some of the products. So we have to just caveat that. Honest Beauty. 
Okay. Legit. They have the best eyeshadow palette and mascara ever. Love. This person said, I don't have acne, but my skin doesn't glow. How can I get that smooth shine? Hydration, hydration, hydration. Get a mist, multiple serums. Use a non-pore clogging oil to seal it all in. But it's the layers of hydration that do it. Layers, baby. Layers. You once mentioned that you did breath work with Celeste. What was that like for her and how often does she do it? Oh, the open breath work. Yeah, that was an experience for me, guys. Celeste encouraged me. Well, it was your birthday. Yes. And that's what you wanted to do. And I was like, okay, it's Guilted birthday. Mari into coming. <laughs> Literally, because I don't think I would have said yes otherwise. Yeah. But it was your birthday. And I was like, I have to go. Yes. So LA. Okay. Cried six times. Like it was life changing for me. Breath work was always the thing that I resisted the most. And it's because I needed to do it the most. Open breath work is like ayahuasca therapy, spirit guides coming in all at once. Incredible. If you're in LA, highly recommend. Great for the new year. Thank you for making me do that. My God. And I've seen, you, saw you use the app too. I do. I'm working with them. I love them. I love them too. I use the app every day. Nothing gets me to a state of calm faster than breath. Five the minutes, 10 minutes. Amazing. You're there. Yeah. If you're not in LA and you want to do breath work or meditation, open app is amazing. Yes. I like how you call it downloads too. Celeste told me you're going to have so many downloads when you do the breath work. And I did. Yes. You get clear. You get super clear. Um, okay. Best daily sunscreen for oil, oily skin. I love the clear stem sunscreen. I just did a dupe on it. It's Hello really sunshine. good. Yes. SPF 50. We need the 50. How to make the most out of female friendships and grow together. Mm, this is so beautiful. I really think it's a relationship and I would say quality versus quantity is my number one tip. Find those people that treat you the way you deserve to be treated and who you're inspired to treat them like the queens they are. If there's any trigger or jealousy or you feel like maybe your friend wouldn't treat you in the same kind, compassionate way, really, really think about why they're in your life and it might not be the best fit. So okay. I love you so much because I feel like we match each other so well and our care and compassion for one another. We only want the best for one another and we fill each other up. We fill up the cup. 100%. And that's what you want. I say that to Greg about you all the time. Aww. And I feel like the older I get, the smaller my friendship yeah. group gets, but the better it gets, yeah. you know? If you have one or two, that's great. 100%. It's and all you need. If you become a mom, you need like three friends. <laughs> You don't have time. Any more than that, it's like my schedule's full, babe. Sorry, not looking. Uh, okay, quick and easy tips for men's skincare. Buy them the products. <laughs> <laughs> Put it on the counter. Legit, set them out for them. I would say cleanser. And then if you can do like a moisturizer SPF combination, that'd be great. Clear Stem has a men's kit. Do they really? Buy the kit, yes. Smart. Yeah. Okay, I love that. That question was from Drake, by the way. I love him. Um, tips for postpartum. Woo! Where to start? Mm, it's really challenging. Therapy. <laughs> yeah. Start going to therapy. Okay. 100%. I started going to therapy in pregnancy. Wow. You need to talk about this transition. It is a rebirth. You're a completely different human. I think if you can get the mentals right... Then after that, it's, you know, it's nutrition, it's nourishing foods, it's bone broth, it's really high protein, grass fed as much as possible. The mentals are number one. Therapy and protein. How did you two meet? Oh, Nate and I have a good story. I'll try to make it quick. We met, well, we saw each other for the first time at a dive bar in Los Feliz. And my husband's 6'6", and I would always search the perimeter of any bar, right? Like looking up. <laughs> oh, and just for context, Celeste and I are 5'10", 5'11". Yeah, 5'10", 5'10 and a half. We're the same pretty much height. Yeah. And so we're we're tall girls. And when you're dating and you're a tall girl, you first you scan up and you're like, okay, is there anyone here? And then you're like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind going home. <laughs> and so I saw him and I was like, ooh, like tall drink of water, dressed in a suit with some cool glasses. I was like, damn okay, I'm going to like hang out at this bar and wait for him to come talk to me. So we were making eye contact. He never did. Oh. My friends and I were going to a party, so we left the bar and I was like, okay, this is a total misconnection, but whatever. 
We matched on Tinder three days later. <gasps> Stop. And he was, was like the hot guy from the bar. So then we went on a date. He ghosted me for three months and then we <laughs> got back together. He ghosted you? He ghosted me. Nate. I know. He was like, uh, you were not quite age appropriate and I don't think you were interested. And I started seeing someone else, but it all worked. So, so you should be sponsored by Tinder, basically. Pretty much. Oh my yeah. God. I, had, I didn't know that. That's actually. how old I am. Tinder. <laughs> yeah. What do they use now? Hinge? I don't even know. I never was on the apps, really. Mm -hmm. I've been with Greg for so long. I it. don't even know what's going on in there. Yeah, it was a wild world, the apps. Yeah, thank God we're not in there anymore. Yeah. Best facial to ask for if you have acne prone skin? Hmm. I think the best facial is to call up your local clean beauty store and ask if there's anywhere they know that uses non-toxic products and go to a place that uses really good non-toxic products. Ask for a non-pore clogging or acne facial, but there's not really like one brand or one name. It's really hard. Someone actually needs to do like a dry bar situation for really good facials because it's so hit or miss. It's so hit or miss. And something I learned also is if you have really acne prone skin, don't just go to like a regular facial place that everyone recommends. Like I know people love Heyday. I personally just can't go to a normal place like it has to be an acne specialist that's probably a better tip they don't always know how to deal with your skin yeah um and, and i've use, had like crazy things there and i just end up breaking out or you get extracted to the point where you're scarred like that happened to me when i was struggling with my acne yeah. people literally would pop things to the point where it was like disrepair yeah same. I've I've looked like I've got in a fight before yeah. leaving. Right. And that's just going to cause more irritation. And just self-confidence out the window even more. Also, working with people who don't talk down to you. I know that sounds weird, but I've been to a fair amount of estheticians who make comments and make you just feel awful about yourself. Like you're dirty. Yeah. Yeah. I've had that as well. Like and reactions like, like, oh, wow, it's yeah. really bad today. And you're like, great. Girl, thanks. I'm like already upset really upset yeah so yeah just be cautious of that mm -hmm. now it's time for the question we ask every guest i believe everyone's pursuit of wellness looks different what does wellness mean to you it's tuning in to your intuition to find out really what you need mentally emotionally spiritually and being dedicated to get yourself there slay big slay Celeste, where can everyone find you online? Where's your website? Plug it up. Celeste Thomas on Instagram. I am back on my TikTok grind, Mari. I know. I filmed one with you earlier. I know. I'm impressed. Stay tuned for the TikTok of me and Mari. That's Celeste Thomas RN. And those are the two places that I hang out the most. And DM me if you need help. I'm, I'm here to help. I really, really want to be that resource for you if you're struggling. Wednesdays, I do Q&As on Instagram. So come hang out with me there. Love you so much. I love you. Thank, Thank you, you for, for having, having me on today. <laughs> Woo! Mwah, mwah. Yay! Yay! Oh my God. Thanks for joining us on the Pursuit of Wellness podcast. To support this show, please rate and review and share with your loved ones. If you want to be reminded of new episodes, click the subscribe button on your preferred podcast or video player. You can sign up for my newsletter to receive my favorites at marilewellen.com. It will be linked in the show notes. This is a Wellness Out Loud production produced by Drake Peterson, Fiona Attics, and Kelly Kyle. This show is edited by Mike Fry, and our video is recorded by Luis Vargas. You can also watch the full video of each episode on our YouTube channel at Mari Fitness. Love you, pal girls and pal boys. See you next time. The content of this show is for educational and informational purposes only. It is not a substitute for individual medical and mental health advice and does not constitute a provider-patient relationship. As always, talk to your doctor or health team.